It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. And by Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high-yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top-quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Schaap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Schaap. The Arkansas State Golf Association hosted their state amateur over the weekend at Jonesboro Country Club. Kyle Robinson of Springdale wins his first state am with scores of 69, 67, 70, seven under par for him. Stephen Cox of Jonesboro finished second. Rhett South of Fayetteville finished third. Trent Jones of Jonesboro finished fourth. And there was a three-way tie for fifth. Mitchell Ford, Ben Sherman, and Josh McNulty all finished tied for fifth. On the women's side, Madison Holmes wins her second state am. 72, 74, 74, her three rounds. That's plus seven for the three days of work for her. Maggie Hewitt of Hot Springs finished second, and Emerson Doyle of Cabot finished third. Coming up on this edition of From the Short Grass, back in March, I went to Scotland, and I sat down with Stuart McComb, the general manager of Cabot Highlands. Cabot Highlands is just outside the town of Inverness on a beautiful piece of land overlooking the Muddy Firth. I really think you're going to enjoy my interview with Stuart, and he gives you some insight into the future of Cabot Highlands and how you can play the course as well. That's all coming up. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group, Matthew Allen and Blair Allen, they know how to manage hotel properties. When you need an overnight place to stay, Make sure you check out Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group, bphotels.com on the web. We're back with Stuart McComb after this. Strength is measured not by the number of accounts. Strength is placing value on relationships. It's having the vision and the guts to invest in growth. It's the commitment to responsibly manage your money. At Stevens, we believe that our strengths build success. Not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group is the leader in the state in managing hotel properties. From El Dorado to Jonesboro to Fayetteville to Kansas City and back home in Little Rock, you will find a Beachwood Pinnacle Managed Hotel property. Are you looking for a weekend staycation? Book the Hilton Garden Inn located on Rock Street and enjoy the Agassi 7 Roof Top Bar with fantastic views of the Little Rock skyline. Open Sunday through Thursday evenings from 4 to 11 and Friday and Saturday from 5 to midnight. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. When I booked my trip to Scotland to sit down with Peter Dawson, the former secretary and chief executive officer of the RNA, I also wanted to bring you interviews with people from places that you could go play. One of those is Cabot Highlands, just east of the town of Inverness, Scotland. Stuart McComb, the general manager of Cabot Highlands, had time for me just before they opened up at the 1st of April. I really think you're going to enjoy my interview with Stuart. And if you are making a trip to Scotland anytime in the future, make sure you put Cabot Highlands on your list of places to go play. On the tee, Stuart McComb. Stuart McComb, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass here at Cabot Highlands. What a magnificent piece of property you have for a golf course here. Sure, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, that's been quite the journey for us. Um, we started here in 2006. We were fresh off of um, a, a seven, eight year run at, uh, at Kings Barnes, building that from scratch, uh, getting that into the Dunhill and, um, you know, five years of that. Um, and then uh, we came up here, and Mark, Mark Parson and myself, uh, we decided that um, we wanted to go again. Mm-hmm. And uh, he most specifically wanted to go again, and he'd found this property, and 
here we are. Um, so sadly, Mark, Par uh, Mark Parsonen passed away in 2019. Uh, great loss, very suddenly, and it was a big shock to uh, to us all. But um, he'll, he'll be delighted with uh, the way this is uh, panning out with Cabot Highlands, Cabot Group coming in. The acquisition uh, has been incredible. And, um, you know, same ethos, I think. You know, Mark's ethos and, uh, and Ben's ethos uh, seem to be very, very similar. And um, it's, uh, it's kind of been a hand-in-glove situation, really. Uh, it's been a very uh, seamless transition, to be honest. Golf in Scotland has a rich and vast history. Golf up this north in Scotland, does it have the same history as a little bit further south? Because we're pretty far north up here, just uh, out east of Inverness. Dornoch, uh, I think it was two years ago, celebrated 400 years of golf. So that's enough history, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah to I say would that. say so. Um, and there's lots of Centurion uh, courses up here. Um, I'm a member at one um, over at uh, at, uh, at Nairn Golf Club, which is a, a particular uh, favourite of mine. Um, 1887, uh, it was in uh, in play. So um, yeah, I don't think there's any shortage of history here. When you look at uh, some of the the classics and the hidden gems, uh, whatever you want to call the other courses in the area, you've got the Fortros uh, and Rose Market that we're looking over just now. You see the the lighthouse just shining there in the Firth. Um, that's a that's a beautiful classic course. Uh, further up, uh, you've got Tain and Golsby and Brora, another you know really famous hidden gem. Further up, um, and along the coast here, we've got Murray uh, Golf Club and you know Spey Bay, and you've got um, Hopeman. You know it's just Cullen. You've got incredible amounts uh, through there. You've got Inverness Golf Club uh, further west. You've got Meter Vord. It's a rich haven of, of 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 old golf courses that have been around for a long, long time. And uh, golf, not just in these parts, but in the whole of Scotland, has been uh, ingrained in in society. You know, you you grow up with it. I think for people that come from the states, if they can find a particular base to play out of while they're over in Scotland, say like Inverness or even a St. Andrews or even an Edinburgh, somewhere to play out of because there are so many golf courses around, even Glasgow if you wanted to, yeah. that there are so many golf courses that you can get to within a day, play your 18, go back, have your nightlife, whatever. With the vast number of courses around, does it make it difficult when you guys are trying to sell your product, if you will? There has definitely been a, a challenge, shall we say, with that. Um, uh, there's no secret of the fact that uh, that Kings Barnes, when we when we left there, was uh, flying high. You know, the 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 amount of visitors to St Andrews is huge. Mark always said, um, you know, the old course was the, like the anchor ten, uh, anchor tenant in the mall. You know, uh, and as long as you build something in the mall that's worthy, then they're already there. They're already shopping. They're going to come. And and so Kings Barnes was was uh, a huge success, brilliant golf course in a brilliant location, um, with a huge amount of uh, of influx of uh, of uh, of touring visitors. So yeah, the you know the Highlands is uh, has been that little bit north. It's three hours north. Um, it's not been on on the top of people's lists, but uh, I think slowly but surely, I think Castle Stewart coming in. Um, I think we opened in two thousand and nine. Um, right after the Lehman Brothers crashed and everything, so it was it was a hard time for the for the business. Um, but slowly but surely, we got into a, 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 a I guess a, a, a cooperative uh, with um, uh, with Nairn and with uh, Royal Dornick and uh, a few of the local ateliers, and we put together a kind of marketing uh, venture um, and trying to really raise the profile of the Highlands for for golfers, and that's been very successful. And um, we've worked together. Um, and it's been a great um, collaboration, if you like. And that collaborative uh, has really paid dividends for us. Uh, and slowly but surely, numbers are coming more and more and more. Uh, I think Dornick now, it's a top 10 in the world in, in a lot of people's eyes uh, or a lot of people's lists. And uh, that in its own right is a, is a huge draw for the Highlands. And so Nairn and ourselves and others, um, you know, do feed off that. In our own right, we're a top 100 in the world golf course. We've got, you know, four Scottish Opens with some great winners. Uh, Luke Donald, Phil Mickelson, um, you know, you've got Jeeve Milka Singh who beat Francesco Molinari in a playoff, you know, and Alex Noren. So, 
you know, we've got we've got pedigree, and uh, there's a reason why people you know want to come to play us as well. So there's more and more reason to come north, and I think as we'll probably come on to the the new dope course is uh, is certainly going to to fit into that realm uh, and and help to build and and continue to build the progress that, uh, that that we're gaining in the Highlands in terms of golfers and momentum and volume of golfers coming to these parts because I think once you're here you get sold pretty easily. It's tough for me to describe what I'm seeing sitting here with you inside this magnificent clubhouse. You look out over the muddy firth and I see the bridge back in the town of Inverness and then this magnificent piece of property that it's it's not flat. I mean it's hilly. Oh yeah and uh, and I think Mark oh you know he always chose sites or tried to choose sites that had topography change because he was all about the sea views and um, you know Kings Barnes that that double tier it's the same here you know you probably don't appreciate it Trey but we're on 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 this top bluff but down on the shore we've got six holes that you can't see Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, so you know you're looking at 18 and 9 so we've got 9 here we've got 18 behind you but down on the shore, we've got six holes. We've got 10, 11, 12 going east, and we've got one, two, three going west. So, you know, it's it's all about, you know, being perched. And um, I think it was Rod Whitten that came uh, very early on, and he said, you know, finally a developer has decided to build a clubhouse near to the shore. Typically what happens in these situations is the clubhouse is further back for car parking and everything else, and you kind of wander your way down to the to the sea, and then you come back up. But here we go along the shore, you know, uh, and that was Mark's great thing was to compress everything onto the shore and try to get really everybody, everybody's attention to what they're coming for, which is the views, the vista, back it up with great golf and great service, and it's a winning formula. The Cabot name. Yep. I need to say this, too, because people listening in Arkansas, there's a Cabot, Arkansas, a town called Cabot, which is about 30 minutes maybe or less north of Little Rock. It looks nothing like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can tell you, it yeah. looks nothing like this, Stuart. I, yeah. But uh, the, the views here, are, I mean, I'm awestruck at it, uh, just to say. But the Cabot name is becoming more synonymous with golf, with where they are placing yeah. their courses. Oh, for sure. Uh, I think uh, Ben has, uh, I mean, the, the mantra, the mission, you know, create magical places where remarkable memories are made. And um, they they want to they they are intent on building a portfolio worldwide portfolio global portfolio of world class golf resorts that is their mission, um, and so you know there's no secret that Ben scouts the world you know I mean very regularly gets you know asked to go and see this property here and that property there, and um, so you know uh, at the moment we've got five and and it all started in uh, in Inverness Nova Scotia. New Scotland, mm-hmm. um, over in Canada, and uh, to be, you know, having a, a second acquisition in Inverness, Scotland, old Scotland, um, you know, was quite the quite the thing, you know, and, and I think the Citrus Farms in Tampa, there's an Inverness very close to that as well, so it's it, it's been a weird journey in that way as well. Um, so they uh, and of course you'll you'll have seen uh, no doubt the um, since the PGA show and that sort of. Uh, opening and um, that, that sort of preview golf that they're, they're they're performing over there at the moment is off the charts. People are just so thrilled with what they're seeing there, and there's more to come. The, you know, obviously there's a, the second course still to open, um, and the clubhouse to build, and 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 the lodges and everything else as well. But I had a, a great uh, a great time there, just uh, taking some guests um, for the day um, when we we're over for the PGA show. So it's an incredible property, and I think you know the the, the brand is a very refreshing brand in golf. I think that's probably part of why they're, I mean, they're, they're building in great places or they're acquiring in great places. Um, St. Lucia is off the charts. I haven't been yet, but that's on the bucket list. Has to be. Um, and uh, But everything I hear and see from our executive leadership team to the people on the ground, people that have played it, wow, uh, that is really special. Um, and of course, uh, up in the mountains in British Columbia, Revelstoke is about to uh, begin its journey and um, you know I think it's the the, the, the best skiing in, in Canada uh, I believe or certainly heli skiing and um, you know again it's just taking taking people to places that isn't just golf 
we've got golf and whiskey and a, and castles and you know, wonderful views up here. Um, but uh, you know, I think the brand is all about you know it, it's it's a an, an experiential um, you know destination. You know, they want to get to not just golf but other other things that they can bolt on to attract the families, you know, and, and, and the wider group to come, not just the golfers. What is the plan here for Cabot Highlands? And for those that want to come and play from the States, you're open April through October. And so you're closed November, December, January, February, March. Exactly. Um, we are ready for business as usual. Uh, the team have done a great job over the winter to get us where we need to be. Um, despite the challenges of construction, which I'll come on to in development. Um, but that's right. We're we're open uh, with our uh, with our golf course first uh, of April through the thirty um, first of October, um, and that's our that's our season. It's 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 a seven seven month season for us. Is it seven? Yeah, seven months. November, December, January, February, March. That's right. So seven months uh, season, and um, uh, we're, we're open for businesses. We're a resort golf course. We don't have any members per se. We have some corporate programs and uh, some some local uh, local stuff going on. But uh, this is a resort course for everybody. And um, yeah, um, just we are at CabotHighlands dot com uh, for anybody that's interested. Um, and then the wider and uh, you know sort of situation for us with the acquisition from Cabot is that. Um, that we've always seen, we had planning permission for 36 holes of golf, um, along with um, some form of, of lodgings and uh, rooms and hotels uh, that, that is part of a, a wider planning that we had um, from, from way back when. So th- I think that was part of the attraction for Ben was he didn't want to take something from scratch. I think mm-hmm. you know he wanted to come into Scotland and uh, buy something that was, um, that was up and ready. So we're already producing cash, and so therefore we have a, a reputation and a business uh, going forward. So to bolt on and put his stamp, that Cabot stamp, you know, Ben stamp onto uh, onto this through the eyes of Tom Doak um, for the second golf course, which we're thrilled about to, to have Tom and Clyde Johnson, the lead uh, architect on, on site. Uh, we expect to have all the 18 holes finished on the second course this, uh, this year and seeded uh, and grassed and uh, looking for uh, as early as we can in 25. We want to get to some preview golf. And that'll probably be early to midsummer, something like that, uh, depending on the weather and the growing sure. and everything else. Um, but uh, alongside that, we have an extended uh, clubhouse that we're about to uh, to embark on. So there'll be um, uh, some some more F and B. Really, is what we're looking for because we're we're also building uh, up to seventy two rooms on site, uh, and so all of that's going to be ready for uh, a, a sort of grand opening in twenty twenty six. This is the the spring off. So we've got a, a half construction year this year um, in the built environment and then a full year next year and get it ready for the 2026 season. What can you tell me about the course besides the fact that you have some up and then some down by the water, uh, the holes that is, but kind of the layout and the difficulty of it? Well, Mark was always one. And with Gil Hans, uh, Mark and Gil uh, were the uh, were the architects here, the co-designers here. And, you know, one of the things we talked about a lot was, you know, we didn't want it to be difficult for the sake of being difficult. You know, the, the game's difficult enough, I think, and I think we all reasoned that through. So we uh, we sort of limited bunkers, you know, from, you know, less fairy bunkers, you know, uh, less greenside bunkers. And we talked about asymmetry, you know, we didn't want flanking bunkers, you know, where it's through the eye of a needle, you know, to try and get through, try to offset, to make it asymmetrical and uh, and have people cheat their aim to, you know, get into a sort of uh, a bailout spot, if you like. So the difficulty is, uh, is definitely out there for the good player, but the, the challenge with all architects, I think, is how do you make something playable you know, for, uh, you know, for, or, you know, challenging the best, but being playable for the rest. You know, that was, that, that's, that's the holy grail of architecture. And, uh, and we, we tried really hard to, to challenge the best, but also, you know, ma- make it be entertaining and, and engaging and not ball and pocket. Because that's, when you disengage your, your customer, your golfer, you know, that's not great. So, you know, you want, you want people enjoying uh, the round. And so, Ball on the ground, you know, less uh, less obstacles and less hazards. So, we are flanked by gorse on one side and and uh, and water on the other, uh, on on the on the on the lower holes. 
but we've got 60 yard wide fairways at times so we were we were cognizant of that we knew that that was a a, a thing um and so we've tried to make it as 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 wide as possible for people but it doesn't mean to say that just because you hit that fairway that you're in prime position for the green it, it, it necks down on the greens at times and you've got to get to the right side of fairways to get the best angle in so it's all about angles it's not about bunkers it's not about deep rough it's about angles of attack and placing on relatively uh, wide fairways to to get to, to get the best chance of success what's the earliest someone can book for the future like you're talking about 2026 the goal to have yep. the rooms and everything when can they book for that soon after christmas uh, into the new year next next january would be the time for 2026 we might so i can't book my tea time today is what you're saying yeah that's right yeah uh, well certainly for um we can take we can certainly take uh, inquiries and then what we'll do for, with that inquiry is when we open our tea sheet we will put it in so we can take inquiries if not necessarily you know booking it into the system but you know your chances are that you're going to get that time if you put that uh, put that request in early enough. So the bookings teams uh, uh, have have worked well over the years and they understand that whole dynamic. The dope course, of course, is just a little bit different in the sense that you know we can't really be taking bookings for that next year, not really knowing what it is, and we don't want to disappoint people either. Sure. But certainly uh, we can we can take um, you know inquiries. Uh, and we'll certainly deal with those uh, as and when, um, and we'll be back to, back in touch with people as soon as we know what's going on. My wife might not like me saying this, but I'm going to say it. Preview. I, I'm I'm willing to come for the preview of yep. the new 18. Yep. Well, it's uh, <laughs> you know you'd be you'd be uh, we'd be delighted to have you, and uh, for sure we're we're going to have you know I would think it will be July, August, September of uh, of 25 for preview something like that. So uh, book it in. I, I might try that. When did you first pick up a golf club and fall in love with this game? Well, that's a great question. Uh, my uh, father was um, out of uh, Cooper in Fife. Uh, so he was uh, a plus four handicap uh, on the side wow. of the hill at, uh, at Cooper Golf Club uh, on the nine holes. He was a runner-up in the Scottish Boys. He turned profe- He was Fife Boys champion, and uh, Fife being the the area, uh, Fife Boys champion uh, five times in the fifties. Um, great player. Um, turned professional. Um, was professional down in London at Royal Dulwich in Sydenham, and then decided that in the in the late fifties it just wasn't a, a great um, uh, a great sort of career, if you like. It wasn't earning too much money at that point. Uh, that was pre Arnie, I think, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. So uh, Arnie was just coming on the scene. So um, he uh, moved career, went to Edinburgh uh, to work with British Airways, got into the airline business, and so we. I, I was born in Edinburgh, I grew up in Edinburgh, and I played uh, on all the the public courses in Edinburgh. I remember at the age of six and seven, getting on a bus, you know, with uh, a, a handful of clubs, you know, in, in a small pencil bag and. Going off to the uh, the public courses there, uh, it was great fun. There was pitch and putts as well, so that was my start. And then at ten, ten years old, I came up here with uh, with the family, and uh, we relocated to Inverness from Edinburgh. And I uh, joined with my father. We joined at uh, Nairn along the road. So I've been a member pretty much off and on since 1974. We joined in, uh, believe it or not. I know, I know you find that hard to believe, Trey. But uh, <laughs> seventy four, I was a member, junior member over at Ten wow. Golf Club, and uh, I, uh, I've been playing off between sort of four and seven. You know, I've never, you know, my father was a professional. My son's turned pro. He's trying to make his way on the in the game. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, professional golf skipped a generation. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, learning from a professional growing up, I mean, that had to be good. Hey, Dad, I, I can't figure out my swing. Can you help me? With exactly, it? yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. And, uh, you know, we had other professionals at Nairn, and we always remember uh, the late, great Gregor McIntosh, who was a, a real stickler for, the, you know, your head not moving. And he'd plant you almost, you know, uh, on and, and, and make sure that head didn't move. So, you know, we, we had some great uh, great people and great characters uh, growing up. I remember it uh, vividly in in those days. Um, but uh, a great affinity with the game. I always have had, you know, it hasn't been my uh, area of expertise. I moved out of um, of golf on the uh, on the sport front and took up snooker instead, you know, which uh, for those of you who don't know is a sort of bigger 
bigger form of uh, of pool. But um, snooker is a hard game as well, and uh, I found that quite tough as well. So, uh, but anyway, I, I got into golf uh, through. Um, I actually really started at St Andrews um, in uh, in greenkeeping. Um, I took my uh, my career path that way uh, with the late great Walter Woods uh, was a, was a great mentor. And we teamed up again, actually, when I came back full circle back to 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 to, to do Kings Barnes in construction. Uh, he was our agronomist there, and uh, so we we met again there, which was which was wonderful. And uh, it was uh, it was just a great a great career path for me to get into uh, greenkeeping and then construction of golf courses in Europe, uh, and then finally coming back home to Scotland to do St Andrews, to do Kings Barnes, to do Castle Stewart, um, and now the Dope Course. It's uh, it's been a real a real fun time for me and, uh, you know, uh, evolving in the game and doing something you absolutely love. Not a great exponent of the game, but, uh, but love the, uh, love the whole, um, the whole aura around it and the, and the industry and the people. It's uh, it's a magnificent business to be in. Favorite golf course you've ever played? Well, County Down and, um, and Cypress Point are definitely up there. Um, you and know, you just recently played Cypress Point. I did recently play Cypress. Uh, it was uh, the most incredible um, the most incredible experience. I And, you know, you always go to these places wondering, are they really going to be that good? And um, it didn't disappoint. And I, I think the genius of uh, of Mackenzie, I thought, was uh, there, was that I couldn't believe that the, the, top, the topographical change, you know, is... I mean, there are big dunes, there are big, big, um, um, big elevation changes there, but it always seemed to feel that on every tee box the hole was out in front of you you were never you know never playing up you know which I think is genius you know as I look back and I wasn't it it was a subconscious thing for me it wasn't Mm -hmm. I was picking Mm -hmm. it up but as I reflected on it you know everything was out in front of you the 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 beauty of the place is is undeniable the drama of you know those holes on the water and but you're never far away from the waves and even when you get up into the forest area you know, the holes are so good. The bunkering is just, it's, I mean, it just sits lovely on the eye. It really does. It, it's absolutely sensational. So I, I would say that's, that's really, really far up there. Uh, I've got a 60th uh, birthday this year, um, which my good friend, who's the secretary of the Honorary, Honorary Company of Edinburgh, Edinburgh Golfers at Muirfield, um, we're going to uh, hopefully uh, take on Augusta uh, this year. So uh, having been there on the ground in 2001 to work on the Masters tournament, never got the chance to play. So uh, I'm hopefully going to get that done. And that will that will strike off Pine Valley, Augusta and Cyprus. Um, and obviously, you know, Dornoch and, uh, and, uh, and, and County Down that are right up there as well. Um, very it's good places. Unbelievable. Very unbelievable. good places. We're, we're very privileged. Fantasy for some living or deceased, you and three other golfers you would like to play a round of golf with? Uh, on the spot, um, well, my father um, was a huge lover of Ben Hogan. Um, so for me, it would be my father, my son, and Ben Hogan. Yeah. Wow. Be it. How about that? Give me that website again for Cabot Highlands. It's cabothighlands.com. Easy. Easy. Stuart, thank you so much. Trey, it you know, a real pleasure, and, uh, and welcome to the Highlands. Traveling to Fayetteville to watch a game? Forgot to book a room for the night? Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group has you covered. Stay where the real fans stay. Staybridge Suites is just south of Baumwalker Stadium and is an all-suite hotel within walking distance of Baumwalker, Bud Walton, Bogle Park, and Razorback Stadium. Or you could stay at the Comfort Inn and Suites with the newly remodeled rooms throughout the entire property. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. When you need an overnight place to stay anywhere in Arkansas, check out bphotels.com first. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. Congratulations to Yuka Sasso of Japan. She shoots four under par to win her second U.S. Women's Open Championship this year at Lancaster Country Club in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hinoko Shinobo finished second at minus one. Ali Ewing and Andrea Lee of the United States both shot even par to tied for third. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.